Exchanges have changed, from places where companies attracted investors to data centers where wars are waged between algorithms that trade with each other at the speed of light. A hidden world where, during a sudden implosion, the infamous 2010 flash crash, $862 billion evaporated within minutes on American stock markets. Wow, almost a thousand points. We call this a capitulation. They're gonna probably halt trading. We can't stop the selling. You know, the flash crash was an event for me that it was a defining event. There was no way for me to ignore that. I was on the high frequency trading floor. Things were going pretty normal. I mean, as normal as it can be, the market was down two and a half percent. It was a riots on TV in Greece, and every time they showed the, the, the Greek riots, the market would drop a little. Um, and I remember looking up, and just like every trading floor, CNBC is on, and I saw that the Dow Jones had dropped another 100 points. And I said, okay, whatever, and kept, kept working. Um, a minute later, I look up, and it had dropped another 100 points. I, I got up off my desk, and I walk over to the futures traders, and they're just scrambling all over the place. They don't know what's going on. They had huge amounts of, of orders in the market. Everything's going crazy. Market started dropping another 100 points, and the CEO of the firm comes running out onto the floor, and he's just screaming, pull everything, pull everything. So they just, they're just hitting it, hitting buttons, turning everything off, everything off. And so we're all sort of huddled around these two screens. And the one screen is, we're looking at the book. So it's the, the futures market. You have a set of people that are willing to buy and a set of people that are willing to sell. This is the market. And as we're watching the screen, the orders, they start, they start drifting, like orders are being canceled. And then they start drifting more. And then they start to go off the screen. And then they were gone. There was nothing. There was no market for, for moments, for seconds. There was no market, and we're all just sitting there, and you're staring into oblivion. You're like, you have no idea what is about to happen. I was thinking that something terrible has just happened. Something indescribably horrible just happened. The market was gone. I picked up my phone and called my trading desk, and I said, what's going on, the guys? And they said, well, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, what are you doing? Are you widening out your markets? And he said, they said, yes, yes, yes. I said, OK, well, that's all we can do. <laughs> Let's wait until it, it stops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get an ocean's feeling. You, it, it, you're worried. You, you don't know, is the world coming to an end or what's happening, right? Even 9-11 didn't, <laughs> didn't have that kind of impact. Um, so you, you just things started to return to normal and the market recovered and it bounced back and everyone just kept going and for me i don't know it it just changed me looking back on that day i i lost faith in capitalism or at least what we had built to be capitalism um, and and i didn't i didn't trust it anymore i lost trust uh, my friend has a phd in climate science from harvard who was working there. There was a PhD in bioinformatics sitting next to me, uh, a semiconductor designer on the other side. Sitting behind me was a master's in math from MIT. And these people are taking their huge brain power and devoting it to making pennies in, in a high frequency trading system. And I, I couldn't really, I couldn't justify that anymore because these, they should have been doing, you know, they should have been curing cancer or global warming. And here they are, they're making a fortune. And were, were we making the markets a better place? Were we increasing efficiency or stability? I mean, that day showed me that we weren't. Hardly ever you hear anyone making remarks on who won and who lost during the flash crash. <laughs> and you would think that would be the first thing that any company would sort of... You would think so. Yeah. Would want to know. Or right. Yeah, nobody talks about it. I think generally people don't want to talk about the flash crash. They want to forget that it happened and hope that it doesn't happen again. What did it take to be a winner? Well, it took um, the courage to step in when everything had disappeared and just start buying as much as you could. Um, well, the courage or the folly, you know, it's not like anybody knew what was going to happen, but some people stepped in and started buying 
and you know they made tremendous amounts of money and most of the losers are retail investors who had stop loss orders in the market um, and even though ones that were busted at 60 percent you know the others were not busted and they lost a lot of money who made money and who didn't during the flash crash everybody i talked to for one reason or another wasn't able to participate in it they either bought too early and were out of they didn't have enough margin so to speak or um, they didn't trust the information or the, some other systems wouldn't let them buy because the market had moved too far away and so they locked them out i had heard of one firm that made a killing on that afternoon it was supposed to be the subject of a 10,000 word article for the new yorker for may of 2011 written by duncan wilson however when he submitted it it that mysteriously they went cold and decided not to run the the story so who was that from? It was Goldman Sachs. He interviewed somebody at Goldman Sachs who was bragging about making a killing that afternoon. So good for them. <laughs>